Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 6th of June, 2011. 192 years ago this day, John Cooch Adams was born. You might ask, who on the earth was John Cooch Adams? He was a self-taught mathematician that managed to calculate the mass, location, and size of Neptune purely from maths, all without the aid of computers, too. I think that's pretty impressive. Well, as I said in the title, we've had a geomagnetic storm. This storm was classified by NOAA as a G2 storm, which is a moderate level storm, and is probably the result of one of the coronal mass ejections that we talked about a couple of days ago. Over a solar cycle, these are relatively common events, occurring on average every couple of weeks, although much more frequently during solar maximum than at this stage of the solar cycle. Is this something to worry about? Well, not really. A G2 event is likely to cause some fluctuations in power grid systems at high latitudes and you'll get some communication uh, fade out again at high latitudes. It is possible that it could produce aurora as lower latitudes as New York. First let's take a look at what's been going on in the last 24 hours. From a flare point of view, the sun has not been very active at all, producing just a minor B flare, and the X-ray background has dropped to the B2 level. So all in all, the sun is pretty quiet. The reason for this becomes clear when you look at the sunspot regions. As I was saying yesterday, most of the regions in the Northern Hemisphere were decaying, and several of them have disappeared overnight. We're left with just three. Those are regions 1225, which is all but gone itself, regions 1228, and region 1232. In the Southern Hemisphere, regions 1226 and 1227 seem to be hanging in there pretty well, but the region that popped up yesterday, trailing 1227, died almost as quickly as it came, so that, that one has now gone and was never numbered. So now let's take a look at the evolution of those regions and you can see very clearly in both the white light and the magnetic movies from the Solar Dynamics Observatory um, HMI instrument that these regions are getting much weaker, particularly the ones in the Northern Hemisphere. 1226 and 1227 are maintaining their integrity, however I'm still convinced there's at least three, maybe even four regions mixed up there, but still only two of them are numbered. The situation in the transition region is much more interesting. When you look at the Helium-304 image from the SDO AIA instrument, you can see there's a major eruption in the northeast. And there are two prominences, one on the southeast and one on the southwest, that also look pregnant for lifting off. Here's a more detailed movie of that eruption in the northeast, which produced a coronal mass ejection. You can see how the dark filament starts to rise and become more dynamic, and towards the end of the movie eventually erupts away from the sun. So this is quite an impressive event. This would be another example to support the hypothesis that we put forward last week, that filaments that start to rise and become very dynamic are liable to erupt from the sun. And we have two more candidates, those prominences on the southeast and the southwest limb. Here are two still frames taken from the movie to show the structure of those prominences. So let's predict in the next couple of days that these prominences are going to erupt and see if we can get more evidence to support our hypothesis. As we saw little evidence of any flaring activity around the time of this um, eruption, we would expect to see little activity in the coronal uh, movie, and that is indeed the case. However, we would expect to see a fairly large coronal mass ejection, and we are rewarded with a very beautiful display from this event. I think that's worth seeing again, and then the same event in the larger field of view C3 instrument. We can then use the Stereo A data to establish whether the coronal mass ejection is heading towards the Earth or away. And indeed, the coronal mass ejection at the end of this sequence is heading our way. The A data shows us what's been going on in the solar wind. And you can see some very dramatic changes in the density, temperature and velocity of the solar wind. If we also look at the magnetic field, we can see that that jumps around from north to south and back again. This is typical of the passage of a coronal mass ejection rather than that of a high-speed solar wind stream. So indeed, the Earth was hit by a coronal mass ejection, and that's what's caused our geomagnetic storm. Correspondingly, the auroral zone looks much more angry than usual, and the KP index is varying between 4 and 6, which is low storm level. So in summary then, the sunspot number is at 116, the X-ray background has fallen to B2 level, the radio sun flux has dropped to 103 solar flux units. The solar wind speed has increased to over 500 kilometers per second, but with a relatively low density of about 0.1 protons per cubic centimeter. And the KP index is varying between unsettled and storm. So my forecast will remain pretty much as it was yesterday, with a good chance of sea flares, 
but a very low chance of getting any more X flares. Sunspot number will remain high, although I think it will actually drop a little bit over the next few days. Coronal mass ejections are still quite likely, and because of the previous coronal mass ejections, new geomagnetic storms are still possible. From our composite coronal image, we see that nothing is due back for at least a couple of days, and there's very little evidence of seeing anything coming over the East Limb, so I think that this region is not going to produce very much in the way of new activity. But remember, I'll be on travel from this Thursday through to Tuesday the 21st of June. While I'm in the UK, I'm going to be giving a public talk on why the solar system is warming. This will be given at the Clamfield Memorial Hall, which is near Portsmouth, at 7.45 on Friday the 17th of June. Details again are in the description box below. The background picture, by the way, is not a picture of the Clamfield Memorial Hall. If you want more details about what's going on in the sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. There are some excellent NASA and NOAA sites that keep you regularly up to date about what's going on. If you want to see earlier editions of The Sun Today, go to my channel, and they're all listed there, as are some of my global warming videos. At your suggestion, I have started to organise some playlists. I haven't organised The Sun Today videos into a playlist as yet, and any suggestions how that might be best done, let me know. If you want to see what the sun was like one and two rotations ago, go to the videos on the 8th of May and the 11th of April. The links are in the description box below. Today's featured global warming video is in the oft-made statement that there has been no warming since 1995 and in fact there's been cooling since 1998. In that video I actually do the analysis right in front of your eyes and you can see the facts for yourself. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.